Okay, so now I want to talk about my seven critical sales tips. Because the six basic steps have been around for, as I said, 20 years. And I've broken them down to components of those six steps for me to develop my seven steps. The first one I want to challenge you on is really dumping the scripts. Now, if you're brand new in sales, whether you're selling memberships or selling PT, if you're brand new, do not dump the scripts. Learn the scripts, learn the scripts, learn the scripts. Because you're brand new, you don't know what else to say. So learn from the beginning the correct phraseology that you need to to close sales, to build, re build relationships, to become likable right at the beginning in that needs analysis. Learn what you need to say and practice that. But the more you practice it, the more that will then become your language. And when it's your language, that increases your authenticity. Authenticity is a critical factor to people liking you. So the concept of dumping the scripts is to get rid of what other people are telling you to say and say it in your words. Now, at each step, we've got, to, we've got to know what we're trying to achieve. And if you're not sure what to say, then sure, use a script. But eventually, put it in your own words. The second tip that I've got for you is use the name of your prospect. I was uh, doing some stretching in the gym that I go to, and uh, a salesperson was doing a tour of a, a little older lady, and... Someone had obviously said to him in sales training, you need to make them feel comfortable. Uh, use their name, make them feel comfortable. And he'd forgotten the name. It was obvious. Because in the space of about, oh, I would suggest 30 seconds, he'd called this little old lady, um, babe, cupcake, honey, and dal. Like four incredibly insulting statements to any woman in 30 seconds. There's no chance this person's going to buy now. He's going to have to sell. But the challenge that I want to give you is to use the name of your prospect. It's a great way of becoming likable. It's a great way for people to uh, build the trust between each other. So if you use their name, incredibly powerful tool. I'm not going to give you any strategies at the moment, although we might do a follow-up uh, professional development video around using names and how to learn names. But if you just simply go into Google and you search exercises to learn people's names, perfect. Now, when people tell me I'm no good at people's names, that is not part of your DNA makeup. Your DNA makeup does not say, um, you're going to be good at learning people's names, you're not going to be learning good at learning people's names. It's a skill that we can learn, it's a skill that we can teach ourselves. So put the energy, put the effort in to learning names and being able to use names, and you, oops, sorry, and you'll be able to reap the reward of sales when you've got this ability to use people's names. I also want to challenge you to inspire people through your expertise. We talked about positioning. We talked about you positioning yourself as an expert. Well, when you're taking somebody through a complimentary session or when you're sitting down with them in the needs analysis, I want you to inspire them by showing how much information you know. There's a fine line here because I'm not keen on you bamboozling them with technical information not using jargon to complicate and confuse them, but rather inspire them with what you know. So for example, you might be simply saying to somebody, now we're gonna do some strength training, and by doing strength training, that's gonna increase your metabolism, and when you increase your metabolism, that means you're gonna burn body fat while you're not actually at the gym. Is that a good thing? Yeah, that's great, awesome. Now that's teaching them so they understand what metabolism means. It helps them understand about the power of uh, strength training. Now sure, I could explain exactly that same concept again using big words, using technical terms, using jargon from the industry, 
and they would sit there with a blank look on their face. That's not inspiring. So we've got to use the language that they know, that they understand, but we need to show them that we know what we're doing. I also believe that you need to show me what I need and then sell me what I want. So when we're taking this client or prospect through a complimentary PT session or talking to them about PT, I want to show them what they need to do to get the results that they need. And then, based on that, I'm going to give them two options to get started with me. I'm not giving them the 16 that I shared before. I'm going to give them the two most relevant options to them to get them started. To get them started. Okay, what else I got there? Number two, one, two, three, four, five is alternate choice and then shut up. Now, this is a really interesting one, and, and you've heard me say this throughout this video is that I'm really keen for you to have just two options that you deliver to a customer. Just two. It's five sessions or ten sessions. It's direct debit or it's paid in full. It's uh, weekly or it's fortnightly. Uh, it's small group or it's large group. When we give them those alternate choices, it makes them make a decision, A or B. So that gives, that empowers them that's decision making, they own that decision. Here's the key point though. If you give them an alternate choice, you then need to shut up. Because the first person to speak after alternate choice will buy. The first person to speak after alternate choice will buy. Now, when you first start doing this, when you first start giving alternate choice to prospects and then shutting up, that pause will feel like eternity. It'll feel like 30 seconds. In reality, it's probably two or three seconds, maybe five seconds, but it's not this pregnant pause of 30 seconds. What we need to do is in that pause, is just not our head, and let them think. We need to give them that time to think because if we start talking to them while after we've given them a choice, we break their thought process. So just keep quiet and wait for them to tell you what's in, what they want to do. Do they want to buy or do they want another option? Okay, number six, follow up everyone. Every opportunity, every client, every prospect, follow them up. There'll be some people who have a, what we call a time sort, where they'll say, you know what, I really love what you're talking about, I really love it, I really want to do it, the problem is I need to go home and think about it. Because they genuinely need to think about it. So let them think about it. Don't force them and say, oh no, I need you to make a decision today. But be professional. And say, so, okay, cool, no worries. Would it be okay if I gave you a buzz on uh, Wednesday or Thursday this week to talk about it a little bit further, answer any questions, or get you started? Ah, uh, yeah, that would be fine. Great. Would morning or afternoon be better? Morning, 10.30 or 11.30. Uh, 11.30 would be fantastic. Now, this is the key thing. Follow up everyone and follow up when you said you would follow up. Because that is the sign of professionalism. Now, one of the best ways to grow your business and strengthen your business is going to be through word of mouth advertising and through referral. I believe you need to earn the right of a referral, and that earning comes through getting results. Now, that result could be using the person's name. That result could be them getting the, getting the physical results that they're after. It may be just giving them recognition. But for me, if you get personal and know some really cool stuff about your client and build that relationship, they'll tell other people about you because, here's a really key word, they like you. When they like you, they'll tell people about you. So that becomes the seventh step 
in order to grow your business. Okay.